Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to go through uh, tools that I think are kind of absolutely necessary, or at least necessary for me uh, when I am uh, landscaping or gardening. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. I've been renovating a uh, two-tenths of an acre uh, landscape for the last uh, 18 months or so. Um, I welcome you to follow along with the channel if you're just finding this video now. I've wanted to do this video for a long time. Um, <laughs> for those of you who have been following me for a long time, I, I wake up every single day and look at email and there are tool companies wanting me to sell something to you guys and I have refused it the entire time I've been doing these videos. There's over a thousand videos on my channel and I have not tried to sell you guys anything nor am I going to try to sell you anything today. So this has nothing to do with brand names or anything. Uh, acquire these wherever you want to acquire them and whatever brand you want to acquire them. Um, I do um, like to spend a little more money on tools that can last a long time. My trenching shovel, which you guys see me use all the time, I've had for, I don't know, this one may be coming up on 20 years old. So, you know, uh, a, a quality tool can last you a long time. But again, not trying to sell you on anything. I think there's probably, um, you know, moving into this um, house, uh, I brought tools from a, a nursery that I had, uh, multiple retail locations that I had, plus my old house consolidated those tools down into the shed over here, which is the most disorganized thing on earth because what you're seeing here on the lawn is about 10% of my tools. Uh, I have way more tools than I need. I wanted to go through the tools I've actually used since I got here and then broaden that out just a bit to show you some things that you might uh, want to consider having. The first thing uh, up, um, you need some sort of cart. Obviously, we've got to move things around. Um, I use the, uh, this is a, a gorilla cart, again, I don't care what brand you buy, but it has this dump feature on it. I will say that on my two tenths of an acre lot, this cart is now too big. So initially, as I was doing the landscape project here, uh, it, was, it was a great tool uh, to have in the arsenal. Um, almost for me, it needs to be retired. I've got to go back and get a small wheelbarrow. I just mulched here last week um, and uh, I can no longer it's a great tool for moving large quantities of things and i just don't have large quantities of things to move on this little tiny lot anymore so again a cart wheelbarrow something like that it's definitely necessary uh gloves um are definitely a necessary uh those of you who don't um you know necessarily work with your hands all the time uh if you do one of these weekend warrior projects um you will get calluses very quickly uh unless you know unless your hands are used to it uh, pruner wise, uh, this one's kind of interesting because if I pulled out all of my ways to uh, prune uh, from that building over there, uh, we'd have a giant pile of them. Uh, a, a, a good pair of pruning shears is a, a definite, it's almost a half to. The nice thing about pruning shears is toward the bottom here, a lot of people don't know, this little notch down at the bottom is for cutting larger limbs. And so you can cut you know, you can cut larger limbs here in this little spot. You put the limb into that space and it will cut them off. Of course, up here at the top, um, don't try to cut heavy limbs, but you can do finer pruning with it. So if you were only gonna have one cutting implement, uh, it would just be this basic pair of pruning shears. Of course, uh, from there, you know, you can have, you know, a nice pair of pruners is definitely handy. Uh, you'll see me use these little shears uh, quite a bit. This is a little just tiny pair of sh uh, lightweight shears that are great for deadheading uh, annual flowers, perennials. Uh, when I do propagation videos, you'll see me use these little pruners because uh, they're great for repetitive motion things because the spring is light and they're easy to use. Uh, and then, um, you know, I've got these large pairs of loppers for whatever reason. I have four pairs of loppers uh, like this, but if you have larger limbs to prune on. These are certainly handy, but again, this back line is the, I think is totally necessary line. The front line here is um, extra um, pruning shears for sure. Uh, another tool, uh, when, when I'm planting vegetable garden or you know almost any annuals, a trowel is definitely, as long as the soil's prepared pretty well, uh, a good trowel is great to have. Another thing uh, when you're looking for a trowel is I would get one that has the inch marks on the front of it. it has measurements on it this one right here uh, will measure you know up to five or six inches actually on the front of the trowel so if you're putting daffodils in the ground or you're putting whatever it is you're putting in the ground if it has a measured distance a measured depth uh, this trowel will help you with that so if you're putting crocus bulbs in and they have to be three inches down or whatever um, good tool for that i do you guys have seen me show uh, the pro plugger several times 
And so this pro plugger will do everything that trowel will do. Um, and for those of you who don't want to be down on your knees, uh, this tool will actually just punch a hole in the ground. And it's good for, you know, good for planting annuals, perennials, your bedding, you know, your uh, vegetable garden. Uh, it's good for uh, like this zoysia sod. This, uh, the, the type of turf I have, if I have a thin area, I can remove. I can remove some good turf from here to another spot and use this tool. Again, I put it on the front line because it's not the 100% necessary. Uh, you can start with a trowel, um, but the uh, Pro Plugger is a good tool um, to have. Uh, everybody's seen me use the shovel that I use uh, constantly is this a trenching shovel. Uh, I really think if you ever have an experience using the shovel, the shovel's about five inches wide. Uh, I have lots of regular shovels as well, but I uh, garden in clay soil here, and this shovel is much, much easier to uh, dig with. And so I've always used a, uh, a trenching shovel. This one was about three or four inches longer when I bought it, so uh, yours will look different than this one. But again, um, great tool uh, for digging uh, quickly. You won't get big, giant scoops out of the ground at one time, but... Uh, trust me, it goes in the ground easier, um, and you, your back will um, your back will appreciate it. You need some ability to clean up when you're uh, landscaping, and so uh, either a broom and a flat shovel, uh, so you can you know broom things up and then get rid of it with a uh, you know with a flat with a flat shovel. This is not a digging shovel. This one's really just for you know cleaning up and moving things on flat surfaces, or a blower. Um, this is a you know elect, little electric. Cobalt, I've got a backpack gas um, blower. I don't like to use it if I don't have to. Plus this place is so small, I don't need it. But this one is a lot less noisy. Please be friends uh, to your neighbors and don't um, use a uh, blower on the 4th of July or on you know all day one Saturday. Um, you know, try to do it, um, <laughs> try to do it uh, and be neighborly with your backpack blower. I've got a few people in here that, you know, I don't know what they're doing all day blowing stuff off. Uh, the next tool, that I think is definitely necessary is a garden rake and uh, you know falling down uh, garden rake is great for you know moving soil smoothing soil out uh, raking up weeds um, that, that you've pulled uh, any any kind of just general cleanup I use this when I'm mulching I'll turn this rake has several functions you have the spines okay that are good for maybe coming down into this turf and you know and pulling some of this thatch out of it uh, the back side of it is great for smoothing out soil. It's, it's actually the back side that I use more than the front side. So I can, I can push soil, I can push mulch, that kind of thing. And then I can also turn it as a third way to use this. I'll turn it on its side and I'll delicately push mulch under plants and, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll pull up a limb on something so that I can push mulch under it. And just, you know, that's kind of the delicate side of, of that garden rake. But I think that one's a, a necessary one to have. Uh, this is a shuffle hoe. A lot of different names for this for this hoe. This is the weeding implement uh, that I mainly use, and so I can go through my vegetable garden very quickly. Uh, this will just slice slice off right under the soil. Um, you just slide this back and forth, shuffle it um, back and forth, and uh, it'll cut weeds off for you. Um, it's a great tool. There are other weeding implements that you can try, and uh, I've used others, but I always come back to this. It's such a simple, old design tool. Um, nothing wrong with it, so there's no reason to try to reinvent it, uh, I don't think. Um, you know, a leaf rake, I think, is something that everybody probably should own. Um, you're going to have things to uh, clean up, especially in the fall. And, uh, you know, they haven't really invented anything better than this yet. And it's certainly better than listening to uh, people um, with leaf blowers <laughs> all day long. I'm on a two-tenths of an acre lot in Raleigh. I could probably rake this entire lot in four hours. And somebody has a leaf blower for six hours. I, I, again, we'll, we'll, we gotta, I got to leave that over there. Okay, the next thing up is some sort of fork. Um, for moving mulch, for moving soil, for moving compost, for whatever. I always, you'll always see me use um, a snow shovel when I'm moving mulch. I always dump, I try to get things dumped onto hard surfaces. And so um, if I can get my mulch or my compost or whatever I'm buying dropped onto a hard surface, then this snow shovel works great for sliding up under it and uh, moving it quickly. Has a large volume. Obviously I'm stronger than some of you watching this and 
may not be able to lift this much material at one time so it might not be advantageous to you but you can see right up here at the front where this thing curls back and gets smaller uh, as it goes i'll shorten this thing to right about here and then i'll get a new one um, but this aluminum snow shovel makes quick work of moving things on a flat surface if you dump your mulch in the grass or some other place um, some sort of fork is good there's all kinds of forks there's broad forks um, you know, there's the straight, um, the straight forks that are great for digging in a garden or breaking up loose soil. I should have brought one of those. I should have brought one of those out. Um, and this is just a, you know, regular like manure fork, uh, here. So, um, some sort of way to move, to put stuff from the ground into your cart, uh, is needed. Of course you need to water. And so, um, some sort of uh, sprinkler like this and water hoses, are going to be necessary when you're gardening. Uh, there's no way around uh, not having water hoses and ways to uh, water your plants. And there's a thousand people wanting to sell you all kinds of things to roll your hoses up and everything else. But um, buy uh, good quality hoses. I've got one in the backyard right here that's kinking a lot. It's got to go. As soon as it's frustrating me like that, it's got to go. I've got to get a new one um, that doesn't uh, is not driving me crazy. The last one on the you gotta have it uh, row. Uh, kind of depends on where you live. I live in, again, the Piedmont of North Carolina. It's heavy clay soils, and uh, this is a uh, this is a pickmatic. There's also this thing called a pick axe um, that has an axe end on this rather than this. This is a mattock uh, right here. Okay, so the pick works great for slamming it down into the ground, and then pull. You know, you slam it into the ground and then pull back on it, and it will break up hard pan soil. The other end works great. The mattock end works great for cutting roots. You can also get an ax version of this. Both of them are good for cutting roots. I need to sharpen this one uh, now, but um, this is a necessary tool depending on where you live. Uh, if you're in an area in e like Eastern North Carolina where it's easy to dig, you may not need a pick uh, mattock, but it also is, has the double job of breaking up hard soil and cutting roots uh, at the same time. Uh, this is a very heavy tool to swing. So if you're, you know, 115 pound woman watching this video, this probably is not a tool for you. Uh, this, you can get, you know, handheld uh, versions, you know, of a pickmatic like this and you can swing them, you know, you can swing them much easier if you get into a uh, tight spot. I know um, uh, this is probably a better tool um, if, you, if you're not quite as strong. So if you guys would, uh, let me know a tool down below that I don't include in this video. I probably own it and forgot to pull it out, uh, but let me know down below uh, an invaluable tool that you use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in your landscape, and that may help others as well uh, with something that they are struggling with. Uh, I've moved up to this row, which is the, you know, I've got it, but you know, they're not necessarily 100% uh, necessary. I do have a lawn, you know, a lawn spreader. Uh, if you have to put down lime, if you have to, you know, spread grass seed, if you have to spread fertilizers, that kind of thing. I've had zero use for this since I moved to a two-tenths of an acre lot. I can throw, throw a lot of those things out by hand. Uh, but if you uh, have a larger lot, you may want to invest in a spreader. I don't know anymore whether garden centers rent these. I, I, the first job I had uh, in um, like 1986 at a garden center in North Raleigh, uh, we rented um, spreaders and some of these kind of tools, uh, tillers and that kind of thing. I don't know if anybody's still doing that, but you may check with your local garden center and see if they are, because if it's something you're only going to use once or twice a year, you know, renting it for an hour might be the uh, way to go just from not storing it. Um, you know, just storing these things can be, uh, uh, you know, problematic. I've got a, uh, um, a tool here to, uh, to grind leaves. Uh, in the fall, and um, it's it's a shred it's a it sh it's a limb shredder and a uh, leaf mulcher uh, at the same time. I you don't really need this tool because if you want to, you can just gather your leaves up on the driveway and run your lawnmower over them. You'll probably need to sharpen the blade afterwards, but you can cut your leaves down into mulch pretty quickly with a lawnmower. So this is not necessarily you know a necessary tool. I used something like this more often at the old house because I had a a partially wooded lot and so I could go through and grind up the uh, the, the larger limbs uh, into mulch uh, pretty frequently so uh, I had more use of it uh, on a larger on a larger lot but that little electric uh, Sun Joe does a great job if you need it uh, I've got a gas head shear in fact I have two I have no idea I haven't had to use it here but if you have larger 
things to cut. I've got a few neighbors in the neighborhood that have, you know, ligustrum hedges across the entire front of their property. I can't imagine not having a gas or electric head shear uh, for that particular job. Uh, this one's got cobwebs on it. I haven't used it in, uh, in, in so long, but um, there are pruning jobs where a gas or electric uh, tool um, is, is super helpful. I've got, here's an electric chainsaw. I've got gas and electric chainsaws. I don't have a tree in this yard that I would need a chainsaw for uh, unless something falls on me from uh, behind back there. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, a small electric chainsaw if you're on a partially wooded lot. Um, I always, uh, people that know me for any length of time, actually know me for any length of time, know that I am, um, uh, I'm prepared for a lot of situations. You know, if the electricity goes out, I've got a backup plan for that. I've got a backup plan for a lot of things. Don't be in line for a chainsaw after a hurricane. Get your chainsaw before a hurricane if you're on a wooded lot and just have it on a shelf and be ready um, for, for whatever. If you're in the southeast, you're going to need a chainsaw at some point if you have trees on your lot. doesn't have to be the best one, but it might be the difference in getting out of your driveway or not um, and having somebody else have to help you. Um, here's a tree pruning saw. Uh, again, not necessary, but uh, for larger limbs, this is not an expensive tool. Um, it's a pullback uh, cutting action saw. So uh, the, the, the action on this is as you pull back, it cuts uh, and uh, super, super easy to use. But if you have larger limbs that you need to cut up and you don't want to buy a chainsaw, that's a, a good tool to have. Most people need a weed eater, um, you know, for, you know, because of how their turf is laid out. I've got my turf in perfect circle here in the back and a perfect circle in the front. And I don't really um, have to have a weed eater but um, uh, I do go and edge uh, with the weed eater. I'll turn the weed eater up on its side and do my edging of the turf with it. So I do use it. I could probably get away without it, but most people probably do have spots where their lawnmower won't reach and some sort of weed eater uh, is, is necessary. Uh, this is a, a tree pruning saw. And if you have trees that you need to limb up, uh, this is a good tool uh, for reaching up higher into the trees. Uh, again, I wish this was another rental item. This is a tool that somebody's going to need a weekend or two here or there, and they're not going to need it on an ongoing basis. Uh, I own uh, a couple of these because of, you know, just years of, um, again, working with larger trees in nursery business and that kind of thing. A flat shovel um, like this one that um, can edge uh, is not a bad tool to own. Uh, this is a good tool for um, edging your lawn, uh, cutting any straight uh, surfaces that you need. They also make these with teeth on them uh, if you have to cut roots and that kind of thing uh, with one of these flat shovels. Uh, I can't remember what those are called, root um, root slayer shovels or something like that, but they have teeth. It's basically this kind of flat shovel with teeth on it. Uh, this is a great tool if you, a person who really likes crispy edges on their lawn and that kind of thing, um, but again, not a necessary tool. How often do you need a pair of uh, post hole diggers? Uh, not very often, but I just put a fence into the front yard. Um, I had to go and buy a pair because I couldn't find mine. And then again, I'm so buried in tools, I found my other ones. So now I have two uh, pairs of post hole diggers and only one set of hands. But um, you know, if you're doing fence projects, this is a pair of tool, this is a tool that's good to have to loan to your neighbors because I've probably spent more time uh, loaning post hole diggers than I have actually using uh, post hole diggers <laughs> in my life. Uh, everybody needs them for a one weekend. So you can be the guy that uh, loans the post hole diggers. Uh, I already showed, uh, I already showed the, uh, this and uh, the pruners. Another thing is a tiller. You won't see me doing a lot of tilling uh, on this channel. This is a little electric uh, tiller, a Sun Joe tiller that I got off Amazon. I've used it in several videos. Uh, I used this to prep annual beds. I used it to prep the vegetable garden the first time. I don't recommend doing a lot of tilling. Uh, tilling can damage, um, damage the uh, life that's in our soils. Uh, but sometimes initially, it's good to work compost in and just wake something up, get it going. Uh, so it's been a good tool for me to have. Uh, I've only used it maybe twice in the last 18 months. And so, um, you know, I'll let you determine how useful that actually is. This one's about 130 bucks or something on Amazon. Of course, you can get a gas. Uh, I had a Honda one for years. It was $1,000 plus for my landscape service. So, you know, you would gauge what you, how much you're willing to spend on one by the size jobs you're doing. But on this little two-tenths of an acre lot, this little electric tiller 
is the perfect thing for that. So that's some of the tools. And again, I, I would love for you guys to comment down below with a tool that you use uh, frequently. I think the first 10 or so that I talked about back here are the ones that are necessary. Everything else, um, everything else is noise. No one's made this easier in the last thousand years. Um, we're still, you know, <laughs> a shovel's still a shovel and a rake is still a rake. And uh, sometimes, you know, um, there aren't shortcuts um, to a lot of these things. Uh, and again, I'm not going to uh, take the bait from all these people and try to start selling you guys things uh, all of the time. Thank you guys for following along with the channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload a video. And thanks for following along.